body fat. Now that's a term that people use it. They don't know what that means. I don't even understand how you calculate body fat. Um, but I've seen a lot of athletes, runners, cyclists, both. They have a tummy, right? They're running day in, day out. And maybe they're getting leaner in some places, but the tummy doesn't go away. So is that something got to do with their food habits or is it genetic? So that's a great question. Um, this is where my hormone doctor hat comes out is if someone tells me that they're not able to burn belly fat or tummy fat, but they're overall thin and their arms and legs are skinny, I'm going to immediately think of insulin. Insulin is a hormone. I'm a hormone doctor. Everybody knows the word hormones. They're like, oh, my weight gain is hormonal. Yeah, this is that hormone. The weight gain hormone is insulin. Insulin is not all bad. You need it to stay alive. If you don't have insulin, we need to give it back to you to keep you alive. That's type 1 diabetes. It's juvenile or pediatric diabetes. So needing insulin is a fact. You need it. But too much insulin all day, all night, snacking, eating all day, that's one way your insulin can stay high and keep your body in fat storage mode. Or your daily carbohydrate intake is high enough and not getting down where you're able to release that body fat and burn it because the carbohydrate intake is cre creating high insulin levels. The, 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 the best way to increase your body insulin levels is to eat a high carbohydrate diet. So uh, I suppose the first best thing to do is work on your diet or work on your food, right? What are the top two things you would suggest that they look at when they're considering this? The first thing, if you're actually looking to make a meaningful change in your food patterns, like let's say your cyclist friend who is overall, ever, I think everything is fine, but they've got this central body fat that they want to let yeah. go of. Um, and we know so many patients like that, friends and family like that. The first thing to do is start logging your data. What gets measured gets managed. Most people think that they're eating healthy, they're eating home food, yeah. they're fueling after a workout, they have deserve it, they've earned it, and then they're not tracking. And they think everything is fine. It's only when you start tracking is when people are surprised. Even a person who eats non-veg, they think, oh, I'm eating one egg, oh, I'm eating two eggs, I'm, I'm having a piece of chicken or fish or mutton every now and then. They automatically assume that they're getting to their protein target. Even a person who consumes a protein shake assumes that they're getting to target. But this is a question of math. This is mathematics. You need to count. And most people, doctors included, don't know how to count their nutrition. We have to help them with that. And we have the app. So we have an app which actually helps people to count. And that's the whole reason is people are surprised that, oh my God, I didn't realize that I'm eating so many carbs. I thought dal is protein, but your app is saying dal is carbohydrates more than protein. Yes. Any vegetarian or plant-based protein is high carb. So that's when they get surprised. So now we move from carbs to protein. Why should I care about protein? So the reason we care about protein is, do you agree that you exist today from DNA from your mother and father? Yeah. No doubt about that. Half of your DNA came from your dad. Half of your DNA came from your mom. Every human being on earth has been built that way. Even if you're adopted or you don't know who your parents are, that's still how you were made. Biologically, it was DNA and DNA of mother and father creates one person. Do you know what DNA does? How does the first, uh, first amount of DNA from the sperm and the egg of the mother and the father, how does it make a whole person, a huge person, a whole adult or a whole newborn baby? Do you know how? No. That DNA code <coughs> codes for protein. Protein alone, whether it's your eyes or your skin color or whether you're going to be obese when you're grown up or whether there's a cancer tendency or not, or you have to build muscles or you have to make skin and hair and nails or make blood cells. Everything is built from that DNA template and blueprint of your entire body through protein alone. The fact that some people's family has a particular type of nose shape, this shaped nose the nose should be thin from here and round from somewhere else. That is through protein putting in certain locations because of DNA instructions. 
everything we are is protein. So if you say it's the building block, oh, but I don't go to the gym, so I don't need to take protein. Somebody said that only if you're gymming, you need protein. If you have a body that you think needs to be repaired and maintained because of daily wear and tear, <clears throat> you need protein. How much? So then the question becomes, there's protein, there's carbs, there's fat in all the food, right? How much protein do I need? Again, there's a lot of evolving science around this. I used to say to people, 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram body weight. So let's say I weigh 60 kgs. What we're saying is that 0.8 of 60, which is 48, I should be eating 48 grams of protein per day. Is that correct? At a minimum. I used to prescribe it that way, 0.8. I've seen that because a lot of our Indian patients are mostly vegetarian, when they're trying to get the 0.8 through vegetarian food, I'm not getting the results that I want them to experience. Because of the quality of plant-based or vegetarian protein being less complete amino acids, less complete proteins. So we have seen that pushing that number to 1.2 at a minimum. So 1.2, so the 60 kg person, 60 times 1.2, that's about 72. Correct. I still round up because bet more is okay, less is not okay. So I might give this person a 75 to 80 grams protein target per day. So that's looking like 25, 25, 30 grams at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What would that look like? Because now I'm very curious. Let's say 25, 25, 25, I want to reach 75. Um, and I start my day with breakfast and then go to lunch, maybe have some snack in the middle, in the, during the day, and then dinner. How would I get 75 grams? What should I be eating? Yeah, so again, most people, they just assume that a particular portion is going to meet the requirement, and they're pretty surprised. So, do you know how much is in one egg? Five grams? Yeah, six grams in the whole egg, if it's a big egg from a happy hen that's not miserable and stuck in jail and and just not getting any sunlight, not moving around. Uh, this is when you include the yolk. We don't want people throwing the yolks. There's no reason to be scared of egg yolks. So keep the egg yolks. And there are days when I sometimes eat eight eggs a day, sometimes 10 eggs a day. If I'm on holiday, I know my safest way to get a decent amount of protein wherever I travel is to order five eggs. That's straight away 25 to 30 grams of protein from eggs. And that's just one meal. That's just one meal. People get shocked. Right. They're like, two eggs, enough. I'm like, that's only 12 grams. You still have another like 50, 60 grams to achieve, if, even if you're targeting this 1.2 number. So then comes uh, for a vegetarian, if they're going to try and reach for dal, like a bowl of dal, like or thick dal or dal fry or rajma or chola, like this big, maybe about 8 to 10 grams of protein. But then most people would maybe eat a bowl and most likely they'll have half a bowl with some vegetables, with some bread, roti, whatever they eat. So from what you're saying, if I calculate correctly, to give them benefit of doubt, it's let's say they get seven to eight grams from the dal and maybe, I don't even know how much do you get from vegetables, maybe two or three grams. It's low and then maybe uh, some curd. Okay. Okay. Maybe even if they don't eat the roti, maybe they're eating rice, but that's negligible amounts of protein. So your big protein sources is coming from the curd and the dal or the pulse of the day. And intuitively people understand is if I say take this much chola to get like 10 or 12 grams of protein, they're like, that's too filling. I won't be able to eat so much. They just can see it in their brain is like, that's going to be very filling and very satiating. But because they tend to lean on the roti and the rice more, because India has such a tendency to make their vegetables and their dals and their pulses spicy, they end up diluting it down with the carbohydrate, which is the roti and the rice. And so then the total protein in that meal, when we do the counting, and again, I challenge all my colleagues, I'm like, you think your patient's getting enough protein? Or my patients, you think you're getting enough protein? Count and show me. Do the hisab and show me. On an average, when we do daily counts, we see people, health conscious person, who has two eggs in the morning, who has one bowl of thick dal at afternoon with a little bit of curd, that's gonna be about maybe 12 grams there at lunch. Let's give benefit of doubt 15. You've got 12 in the morning from two eggs, 15 at lunch, and then maybe a dal at night, if they're vegetarian. If they are Gujarati, 
like I'm a Gujarati. Yeah. They want variety dishes. They're going to do some like bhel. They're going to do a pizza or a pasta or some Mexican or some falafel. Maybe there is some pulse in there and they're adding maybe about 10 or 12 grams. So you've got the 12 plus the 15. So that's 27 plus another 12 benefit of doubt. You're reaching about 40. You needed to reach 80. So most people are protein deficient. So if they are protein deficient, what is the impact of that on their life, on their daily life or on their performance? Most people don't come into my office saying, hey doc, I'm protein deficient. Nobody, nobody's thinking about it. Nobody's counting it. But what I have written about in my book is I've made this word up myself is adult protein malnutrition syndrome. People are walking around with malnutrition of protein, not realizing. What are the symptoms? Hair fall, poor quality skin, repeated infections, low immunity, low energy, feeling hungry all day, chronic aches and pains that don't get better. You go to the physiotherapist, you're not recovering. You're going to the gym, you're not seeing muscle gains. You have gut issues, you have digestive issues, you're constantly bloated. You, whatever food intolerances you have, a lot of that I see is coming from protein deficiency. So it actually gets better. So the most troublesome uh, belief system in India is protein is heavy to digest. Correct. Or they'll say, I can't have too much protein. It gives me gas and it gives me bloating. And we have to back up and say, excuse me, the gas and the bloating is because you have an inflamed, unhealthy gut lining. And it is the carbohydrates in that food which is triggering the inflammation and not the protein. So even if someone has some temporary gas, we have to help them to work through that to get the protein up to target.